The Earth's a planet that's unique from the other planets in our solar system in many ways. One of the things that make the Earth so special is plate tectonics. If you look closely, Earth's crust is broken up into fragments, or plates if you will. Floating on the currents in the upper mantle, these plates slowly drift across the surface of the Earth in a phenomenon that's known as continental drift. The plates formed over 4.5 billion years ago when the Earth had cooled enough to form a solid crust. This crust didn't form globally, but at specific places which were cooler than the others first. These young plates floated across the then global lava sea, slowly increasing in size. Just as everywhere else, heat inside the Earth rises, and when it cools down it sinks, creating currents in the mantle. Upon these currents the plates drift. We differentiate two types of plates, oceanic and continental. Continental plates are thick, about 70 kilometers deep and relative low density, composed of mostly granite and quartz, thus felsic in composition. Oceanic plates are significantly thinner to only 10 kilometers deep and have a high density with a mafic composition, rich of basalt. Where plates bounder and move along each other, we separate three types of movement. Moving toward each other is convergent movement, moving apart from each other is divergent movement, and moving alongside each other is transform movement. A convergent boundary between an oceanic and another plate has one plate slide below the other into the mantle in a process known as subduction. This results in a subduction zone in the form of a trench. If two continental plates converge, an elevation in the form of a mountain range will form. This is what's likely going to happen to the Mediterranean Sea when the African plate collides with the Eurasian plate about 50 million years in the future. In a divergent boundary, fresh magma is pushed up from the mantle into the fault and then hardens as a new part of the crust. This pushes both plates apart without leaving a giant gap of lava between them. This results in a rift like the Mid-Atlantic Ridge or the East African Rift Valley. In transform boundaries, the plates move alongside each other. This isn't a frictionless process and they always move with shocks in the form of earthquakes. Think the San Andreas Fault. With these processes, the tectonic plates of the Earth have been creeping along the Earth's surface for millions of years. We identify 8 major plates and 10 minor plates. The 8 major plates in order of size are the Pacific Plate, the North American Plate, the Eurasian Plate, the African Plate, the Antarctic Plate, the South American Plate, the Australian Plate and the Indian Plate. The 10 minor plates are the Somali Plate, the Nazca Plate, the Philippine Plate, the Arabian Plate, the Caribbean Plate, the Caucasus Plate, the Caroline Plate, the Scotia Plate, the Burma Plate and the New Hebrides Plate. Plates aren't eternal and in the past there were other plates which have now almost entirely been subducted into the mantle. Examples of such subducted plates are the Phalaron and the Kula Plate, which have now almost entirely been subducted under the North American Plate. We can find evidence of such plates in the mantle. If we extrapolate the current plate movements over time, we can reconstruct the supercontinent of Pangaea which existed over 250 million years ago. You can see that about 130 million years ago the Gondwana plate still existed but later broke apart to form Africa and South America as two separate continents. If you go back 350 million years to the mid-Devonian period, geological features such as the Raic Ocean still existed and the map of the earth becomes unrecognizable to us. 600 million years the supercontinent of Pannotia existed and about 900 million years it was the supercontinent of Rodinia. 1.8 billion years ago the continents formed the supercontinent of Columbia. In the far past the crust was thinner and the plates could move a lot faster on the mantle currents. Over the eons the crust became thicker and plate movement slowed in a process that continues today. Plate tectonics have been confirmed to exist on Earth only. They have not been found on any extraterrestrial bodies as of yet. Mars is particularly interesting and often the first object we look to for similarities with Earth. Today Mars is believed to be largely tectonically quiet. Though on Mars there is evidence suggesting an active geological past. It's not pioneering to suggest that Mars in the past had a look quite similar to what our own Earth looks like today. Though Mars has a radically different lithosphere and the crust is much thicker than the Earth's. About 5 times as thick in some places. The core is surrounded by a silicate mantle that formed many of the tectonic and volcanic features of the planet. But it appears to be dormant now. Venus has no signs of tectonical activity, though here also it may have been a thing in the past before the Venus runaway greenhouse effect started. The lack of plates is caused possibly because its crust is too strong to subduct without water to make it less viscous, which itself is a consequence of the runaway greenhouse effect. While some would look to Jupiter's moon Europa for tectonics, this has proven to be a wild banter chase so far. Europa is quite literally a world apart from the Earth. And instead Io might be a much more promising as it's tectonically active as confirmed by the Galileo mission. Though Io is a bit tricky as the activity is caused by Jupiter's strong gravitational field bending the moon rather than plate tectonics driven by mantle currents. On Titan, the largest moon of Saturn, it was reported to show tectonic activity in images taken by the Huygens probe, though again there is no confirmed evidence of active plate tectonics, as the Huygens lander died before it could observe any. Many scientists believe surface water is key to a sustainable plate tectonic system. The search for extraterrestrial plate tectonics remains inconclusive and therefore a supportive argument for the rare earth hypothesis.
This channel has finally reached 25,000 subscribers, thanks to you people. Therefore I have decided to set up a Discord server for my community. The link will be in the description below, so come check it out. I hope to see you there and in the next video.